what's going on guys? This is AK Spartan Killer and welcome back to another episode of Surgery Simulator. Um, that episode was crazy with me and Kat. That, like, legit, I couldn't see anything, which is probably why we failed. Uh, it was awesome if you haven't seen it. Um, okay, so it says, please turn on speakers or plug in the headphones. Welcome to virtual knee surgery. This activity will show you the process of replacing a failing knee joint. Are you ready? Today, our patient is a 76-year-old man. It is mandatory to check the patient's vital signs before beginning surgery. An anesthesiologist in the operating room performs this step. If the patient's vital signs are not in the normal ranges, we will not proceed with the surgery. Using the healthy person's vital sign chart as a reference, can our patient undergo surgery today? Obviously, yes. Duh, that's what this game is about. It looks like surgery will proceed. Duh. No, we Take can't operate to today. Game over. Which knee do you think needs surgery? Dude, this is weird. Where's my You're right? His left knee appears worn down and lacking cartilage, which is likely the cause of his pain. Where's the lady? The nurse has begun prepping our patient for surgery by placing an IV needle in his right hand. Uh... Now it's your turn. Use the marker and write your initials on the proper knee to be operated on. This may seem silly, but it's an actual step taken to prevent wrong site surgeries. It actually is. Pro tip. They actually, I've known of people who have to get surgery and they have to get their arm amputated or something like that. And they actually write this one on the appendage that needs to come off because they wake up and this arm's gone. And they're like, where the frick is my arm? And they're like, oh, guess what? This one that we left that's all diseased is still attached to you. So, um, we're going to need a marker. Hey, a bovie. Pro tip, I am a surgeon now. The bovie is used to cauterize the veins for bleeding. Hmm. Marker. Left leg. Their left or my left? A. K. Nope. Oh, he said nope. Man, I was going to draw a little arrow that said this one. <laughs> <laughs> the anesthesiologist administers drugs through the IV and I like how it was like nope. the space. What function should these drugs perform? Um It has anti inflammatory nope. It doesn't have anti inflammatory it has relaxant. Fantastic. I like how when I get it wrong, it's like nope. Nope. Does it does it make you forget amnesia? No, it, it kills pain. No. What? Good work. Great. After the patient is unconscious and before the first incision is made, we need to establish a Where is your body, dude? Area. What the frick? Isolates the surgical field from the rest of the patient's body. A tourniquet is applied to cut off blood This is just flow, like teaching me how to do knee surgery. The surgical field during this is surgery. stupid. To kill the bacteria on the patient's leg, clean it in a betadine solution. This scrubbing process will limit the chance of bacterial infection. I don't care about you talking to me, son. Betadine wow. scrub is applied two more times, followed by the final arrangement of sterile drapes. Whoa. So, uh, pro tip, Why when you, you go tanning, surgery, ladies, so that's what your leg looks like. Okay, what do you think this knee- Why do you think this knee surgery to keep the patient warm? To protect the patient's new prosthetic from hard or- From hard to treat infection? Good work. Use the sterile marker Baller. the location for our incision. Grab the Don't marker. Forget to mark the perpendicular Shut up. Too. Typically, the incision line is six to seven inches long. Mwah, that was horrible. Mwah, mwah. A football. Your leg looks like a football. What purpose do you think the perpendicular line serve? To make it easier to match up the skin. Boom! For the incision. Take the scalpel Grab the scalpel. The skin following your markings. Mm. Mm. Oh! Oh my lanta! This will help decrease blood flow into the surgical field. See, cauterize. Oh, N Nagy. No, Nelly. Whoa, Nelly. The rake retractors fold the skin and tissue out of the way, exposing our patient's knee. 
What is that? To operate, we need the patient's knee elevated and bent mm -hmm. so the bones are fully exposed. 90 now degree. the leg is at the proper angle. Oh. Use the rongeur to remove the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL, the meniscus, and any bone spurs that may be lurking about. Excuse me, your meniscus is showing. What is it? Grab the rongeur. Oh, heavens, to Betsy. Was I supposed to clip that? Clippity clip clip. Are you a good sculptor? It's time to shape the femur, tibia, and patella. No. So the new knee components fit properly. Why is that stuck and on the leg? Be drilled inside the femur to set oh, up the Nelly. Moral cutting jig oh. and the device. Holy mackerel! The jig is put into position and helps ensure that the cuts made to the bone are exactly uh. Now hammer in the pins to hold the jig. Grab a mallet. Oh heavens. We can now remove the alignment device. The pins will hold the jig firmly in place. Now for some real bone shape. Use the bone saw to cut the bone so it is prepared for the new femoral component. There's been nothing going on up here, has there? I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down. Ah, oh, grab the bone saw, got it. Another cutting jig, along with the bone saw, allows us to finish shaping the femur. Dude, stop cutting! Stop cutting on his body! Let's move on and shape the tibia. The tibial cutting jig is aligned with the big toe and the highest point of the tibia. This will ensure the leg is properly aligned after surgery. Mm -mm. Secure the jig in place with more pins. <laughs> ding, ding. Dude, okay, just think about this for a second. Use Something is going inside the, the bone in your body. Uh, <laughs> Goosebumps, you see it? Good. Look, you can see them, like, for real. Oh, my God. Gross. Grab the bone saw. Heck no, dude. Now we'll use the patellar cutting jig and bone saw to remove the back of our patient's patella. Oh god, I need to take this out. Oh heavens! What are you doing? Stop! Holes in the tibia and patella are drilled and chiseled out, which will enable the new components to attach properly. God, dude, this is to place why is that why was it pushing out? First, attach the femoral trial component. Attach the metal tray trial component to the tibia. Metal tray component. Boop. Insert the plastic trial spacer into the metal tray component. What's a trial? The plastic spacer. Lastly, attach the patellar trial component. Patellar. A little ball. Boop. Why do you think the two tibial components are inserted separately instead of as one unit? The parts are sold separately. They're easier to insert. Uh, the plastic spacer can be replaced when it wears out. We'll play with it. No. <sighs> Fantastic. Dang it. Should've went my gut. Motion test to assure a proper knee alignment and successful prosthetic. Fit. What if his leg Typically, pops out? Normal range of motion allows the leg to move from zero to 130 degrees. How does our patient's range of motion? Chicka, 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 what? What? He's alive! I do the mash. Dun 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 dun. The monster mash. Dun 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 dun. Chicka chicka chicka. Yeah. Boop. Knees aren't meant to bend sideways. So it's important to determine whether there is a gap or space between the femoral and tibial components. Stop moving this no thing. There's no noticeable gap, so this knee is a good this fit. This knee is a great Why fit. Why do you think there are so many steps taken to ensure proper alignment? To provide time for questions so the knee doesn't get infected. Faulty alignment can produce many complications right. for the patient. Duh. We've tested the trial <laughs> There's a reason why I went to medical now school, stupid. Now them and prepare for the permanent components by applying a special cement compound that, that binds, binds metal, metal and plastic, plastic to, bone. to bone. Thank you. Scrub technician has mixed up a batch of cement for you to use. Cement. Chewing gum. Awesome. Cucumber. With the cement in place, the final components are permanently attached to the knee. Any excess cement will be scraped off and thrown away. Yeah, no, Lay that's gum. flat on the table so the new knee components mm. put pressure on each other. This mm. allows the bone and components slowly to drag. The cement. The it cement said slowly drag the left way. I was like, 10, 15 minutes to harden. 
We perform our range of motion tests one final time. Oh, slowly drag. Uh, ah. That was too fast, Doctor. His knee exploded. His knee is looking good. Let's close up the incision. First, suture the deep tissue and fat layers back together. Foop, 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 foop. Like a football, Closing your knee the is there. Incision, you have a choice between the stapler and the suture. Stapler. All day. Skadoosh! Skadoosh! Welcome to Staples. What is the primary difference between these two methods of closing the incision? Struct suture. Sutures cause less scarring for cosmetic purposes. Staples set off airport security. Levels of sterility. Strength of closure. Less scarring? Excellent. You know, we couldn't ask for a better participant. Boom! You've done an excellent job. Are you sure this is your first total knee replacement? Nope, been doing them for years. Remain in the hospital for, for three, three days. days, followed by three to eight weeks of physical wow. therapy. Wow, that is because a long this time. Surgery, our patient will have significantly reduced pain and increased mobility. Yeah, except for the fact that he just cut his knee open. Let's think about the life of the new knee components. What kind of forces do you, you think, think the, the new, new knee, knee will need to withstand? Maybe two times the body, the weight of the body with every step. You think that'll be a good thing? But two times the weight of the body with every step? Nope. Ah, three? Nope. Dang it, five? Nice job. People average about 5,000 steps per day. Our patient's new prosthetics will withstand a great deal of force. I want bionic legs if my never goes out. million steps or more. I'm off to check on another patient while the OR team prepares the room for the next surgery. You've been a great help. See you next time. You're welcome. He's still talking. Why are you still talking to me? Oh my god, he's still talking. What is wrong with him? He's possessed. He's possessed! Thank you. You're welcome for helping you. What? Stop talking! I just want to let you know that I think that your eyes are really beautiful, Zach. <laughs> Stop it, you. It's been really good getting to know you. These 11 minutes in the OR. Trying to get this dude's knee together. You know what? You're totally welcome, dude. Anytime. We're bros now. I think we're more than bros. We should maybe hang out sometime. Play some video games. Maybe I could, like, move in and we could be roommates. Whoa! You need to calm down a little bit, sir. Just met you today. But I seriously think about it. Ah, uh, maybe we could play Ultimate Frisbee together or something like that. I, I don't think he's gonna stop talking. Stop talking! Stop. Stop it. Yeah, he's not talking. Yeah, pick your nose. Alright, guys. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna keep moving on and moving on and keep surgering up everything else. But as of right now, it looks like our time is up. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a comment down below whatever you are thinking. And I will see you guys next time. Peace!